Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Masuahli. I'm a Royal Television Society and Steve Hewlett Foundation bursary recipient and I'm going to outline my first year at university and my Royal Television Society journey so far. It all started when I applied for a bursary to support me during my first year studying at Queen's University of Belfast. It was an easy process. I filled out the application and attached my short film Hindsight which had some success on the festival circuit. And after two interviews, I got the call to say I was successful. It was a real privilege. My first RTS event was with Steve Hewlett Memorial Lecture delivered by Mark Thompson. It was a very inspiring and insightful event, discussing the legacy of Steve Hewlett and the modern landscape of journalism. Later in the year, I was invited to take part in the RTS Student and Craft Masterclasses alongside the RTS Patrons Dinner. It was an amazing experience allowing me to learn more about my own craft and of course meet the amazingly talented industry professionals in attendance and my fellow RTS bursary recipients. I also had the opportunity to attend many online masterclasses and small group sessions organised by the RTS and the bursary team always keeps us up to date with new opportunities. I can't thank them enough for that. In terms of the university course itself, I find it beneficial and informative but it was definitely the RTS support and the extracurricular activities I undertook which made the biggest difference in my professional development. It was because I made it my focus to gain new skills and experience in filmmaking and journalism over the last year. I wrote, directed, produced and did additional editing and graphics on my short film Groining which was funded by Northern Ireland Screen for the BFI Network. For this film, I was heavily inspired by the genre of social realism and aimed to create a film which tackled serious topics with authenticity and truth. It focuses on Sarah, a sci fiction year old girl who finds the courage to open up about the abuse she faced when she was young and the psychological consequences of it while attending an appointment at a children's mental health facility. As I understand how important the representation of mental health is in the media, I consulted many mental health organisations on the script, including the Mental Health Foundation, who called the film, and I quote, great, very realistic, and sensitively done. The film premiered at Richard Harris International Film Festival in October 2019, and it's garnered six wins and five nominations on the festival circuit. The film was also reviewed by the World Health Organization, including staff who work on mental health around the globe, and the director of mental health and substance abuse at the organization, who selected the film alongside three other finalists to be nominated for the WHO's Mental Health Film Prize. This is really exciting. The winner will be announced in October at a special event on Mental Health Day. In addition, I completed a cinematography certificate at London Film Academy during my Christmas break from university. The course helped me develop an enhanced perspective of the cinematography process providing training on lighting, DIT, camera operation and lens manipulation among others. My main motivation for taking the course was my interest in documentary work and non-fiction work and the fact that many opportunities in the area was for self-shooting PDs. I also have the privilege of getting another short film funded by Northern Ireland Screen for the BFI Network. Did tie a short film entitled Bleeding Out, which I produced alongside being the digital imaging technician of the project. We shot the film in July, which of course was a major challenge due to COVID-19, but we got the job done safely and effectively, and I'm glad to say I developed new skills due to filming in these unique circumstances. It also gave me the motivation to seek additional training, such as screen skills as coronavirus, basic awareness and production training. Bleeding Out is currently in post-production, and I can't wait for people to see it once it's finished. I also tried to get new experiences in journalism for a year, because I'm very passionate about that also. I created a video about sharing guys and scenes filmmaking techniques, which I'll be posting on YouTube very soon. And I also wrote my first op-ed entitled The Murder of George Floyd, We Can Never Go Back to the Status Quo. I wrote the op-ed after seeing the horrific video of George Floyd's murder, Understanding the Social Science Has to Occur. It was later published in the Minnesota Daily. I am also passionate about employing young people to have their voices heard and have therefore hosted online information sessions with the Education Minister and the Children's Commissioner for Northern Ireland where young people got to ask their questions to these key decision makers. This is in addition to meeting or working with key organisations and figures such as the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health, the Education Training Inspectorate, 
the former Secretary of State for NI, the current Minister of State for NI, and PM Boris Johnson. As part of this work, I have also appeared on BBC News, BBC Spotlight, BBC NI's The Top Table, and various radio stations talking about youth rights, mental health, and COVID-19, among other issues. Well, I think that's been my year. I want to end this video by saying a big thank you to the Royal Television Society and the Steve Hewlett Memorial Fund. The generous financial support they gave me, alongside the amazing opportunities in training, has made a big difference in my life and my university experience so far. As a young person with multiple disabilities and coming from a low socioeconomic background, it's inspiring to see that there are organisations determined to make careers in TV and journalism accessible. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.